This is my uh, version of a Lord Kelvin generator, which is a really cool device that uh, generates electricity just from dripping water. And uh, what I'd like to tell you about is some of the tips that, that I figured out in making mine work. You can go on the web and find out lots about the physics and some of the design features of them. But when I first made mine, it wasn't working, and I had to change it some, and now it's working. So I uh, thought you might find that useful. So one of the things I think is really important is to have the right kind of water flow. So uh, here's an adjustable tap uh, on my two-gallon two uh, water bucket, and it goes to a tea coupler. And then this is a uh, five millimeter inside diameter plastic tubing that uh, goes to little nozzles that adjust the water flow. So these nozzles are just uh, a quarter inch copper tubing, but I soldered on the end of the nozzle a little cap and then drilled into the cap a 1.5 millimeter hole. So that way it forms a nice fine stream of water that goes down through the metal tube uh, and somewhere down inside the metal tube it goes from a continuous stream into individual drips. Uh, and right now you can see it's developed a lot of charge and that gives you uh, a situation where little water droplets are just flying off in different directions. It's no longer making a continuous stream. And if that's happening, then you know you're getting you know, a good charge out of this. Uh, this is without a, a, a spark gap connected. And we'll just go ahead and connect the spark gap here and show you that it's actually making its spark connection. So uh, for a spark gap, you can really just use bare wires. But I made this one with some little copper balls that uh, is just kind of pretty and uh, changes the shape of the end a little bit and uh, get a nice little gap across there. So the, the spark, uh, you can kind of calculate what the voltage is according to the distance between the two ends uh, of, the, of the wire. Uh, and I can get this one up to about four millimeters, which is something in the neighborhood of 10,000 volts. So uh, an another feature that I think is really important is uh, to make it all, uh, make all of your scaffolding and so forth out of uh, a good insulator. Uh, this one's made from PVC pipe, which is convenient and cheap. Uh, but previously I had the buckets sitting directly on the wooden base and it didn't work. And so I raised them up a little bit, but particularly I raised them up with plastic boxes. And I think that that pr provided some insulation. Uh, and it may have been that the buckets were, were actually conducting some amount of electricity through the wooden base. So wooden, uh, wood, wood's uh, not as good an insulator as what you'd suspect. suspect. So I think having uh, plastic uh, underneath your boxes, uh, underneath your, uh, your, your buckets will work better. Um, so water, what kind of water? So this is just city tap water and it works fine. So there's some websites that say you need to uh, get rainwater and store it in dark conditions and all this kind of stuff. Well, that's just ridiculous. Uh, just city tap water is fine. Uh, when you're testing it, you know, I'd say test it with the spark gap disconnected and wait until you get those, you know, flying little droplets of water and then you know it's, it's working well. So that's my Lord Kelvin generator. So I uh, uh, hope you can get yours to work fine. It's really quite a remarkable device, uh, fun to play with. Uh, have fun.